Hi everyone! So today is a fragrance video and again I've introduced my categories series that I'm, I've started um, and this series is really to introduce you to categories of fragrances. The previous one I have filmed was about uh, expensive smelling fragrances and that is the link down below. So is every review about every fragrance that is actually available on my channel. I'll just link them down below if you want to review a particular fragrance. We have quite a spread here, so I'm not going to stop and talk about each one in a lot of detail, but I want to give you like an overall gist about how I feel about a fragrance and the ones that are available and that I've done reviews for are going to be down below. The rest of them I will do reviews for eventually and <laughs> so soon hopefully. Um, and today we're talking about floral fragrances. I usually do a spring fragrance rotation, but right now I'm kind of in between two towns. I work in one and my family stays in the other and we travel back and forth and it's a bit of a mess. So this year I've elected not to do a spring fragrance rotation, but instead I'm going to keep doing these um, groups of fragrances, sort of overview, a snapshot of a particular kind of fragrance and you might find something interesting for yourself within those categories. So today is going to be a very fresh and springy sort of uh, video about really wonderful floral, very floral fragrances that I own and I would want to talk to you about. And I think it can probably double up as a spring fragrance collection, although, you know, in spring I might want to gravitate towards a variety of different things, but a lot of what I wear is florals, fresh, beautiful, dewy florals. And this is what we're talking about today. So let's start with an acquisition that is rather recent. Um, this is Erin Lilac Path. Very interesting um, choice, very interesting scent. Uh, and I mean, I will film probably a review about it, but I basically purchased it because it smells precisely like lilacs. This is the hyper-realistic fragrance, meaning that, I mean, Erin um, fragrances are very elegant and very tuned up, very well edited, well selected, wonderful quality ingredients. I haven't owned a lot of them, but I've tried a lot of them. And I've picked it up without wearing it for a long period of time because I was just exceptionally enamored with this scent. I am somebody who grew up um, in Eastern Europe. Uh, as a child, we had a lot of lilacs growing um, in our apartment complex. It was my, the smell of my childhood. It's one of the most comforting scents, which is why I smelt it in Erin Lilac Path and I could not walk away without. Um, normally I'm a perfume wearer who tests out fragrances long term before I even, um, you know, move to purchase something. I usually go through multiple samplers. Lilac Path, it captivated me, captured me, and didn't let me go. In short, basically smells like blooming lilacs. You can almost see the light purple, you can almost feel the, the, the uh, velvety texture of the tiny little flowers. It is just extremely hyper-realistic. Um, it's good for those of you who enjoy florals, it's good for those of you who enjoy very real um, scents. I have to say, you, wearing this makes me feel like I rubbed a bush of lilacs all over myself and I love that. Um, this is not one of those fragrances that disappointed me. I oftentimes, when I, when I do break down and purchase a fragrance on a whim, very often it leads to a great disappointment and unfortunately I get very sad about it then because I just, I just love fragrances so much. I want each and every one of them to be a perfection of a jam, but it doesn't really work like that. Lilac Path, however, did not disappoint me. It's a, obviously a very beautiful package. It has a impeccable, in my opinion, design. I do tend to gravitate towards more minimal aesthetics, so this is kind of like completely up my alley. I think it's very beautifully designed. I think it's luxurious. And I think the scent is just so realistic, it's kind of freaky. If you love the scent of lilacs, but don't want it to smell like an air freshener, instead you want it to smell like an actual lilac bush. Lilac Path by Erin is really quite good. I would obviously recommend you test every fragrance on your own skin before buying and I'm not advocating um, for blind purchases because I'm not a big fan of them myself, but 
I feel like if you know a lilac lover, this is a fairly safe way to go because I mean, all it smells like is a bush of lilacs. There's nothing really else in there that grabs you and distracts you. It's pretty straightforward and it wears really very nicely, very elegantly. I think what a fine for, for spring, you do enjoy it. <laughs> this is a scent that I've heard people refer to as a fall fragrance and I disagree. This is my Burberry or the Parfum, so the original stuff, the stuff that was released first. And for me, this is a spring fragrance because I think when I think about spring florals, I think about this dewiness, this freshness, the hyper green leaves, the, um, the, the new life <laughs> emerging from the ground, proving to all of us that uh, the new life can, can live and get through anything, even the half frozen ground. Here we have, you know, the sweet pea. We have a, a lot of different vanillic undertones as well so this is maybe a little a little bit more sweaty a little bit more hot and bothered a little closer to the summer but it, this is a powerful fragrance so you need to dose accordingly which is why i enjoy wearing it in the early fall because it also gives me this um moist sensation i know some people hate that word but this sensation of slight dampness and wetness and i think this kind of a thing can make a fragrance work in both fall rather early fall and spring because the dampness helps the fragrance feel a lot more authentic and these damp seasons, at least where I live, really befit themselves to my Burberry. Like I said, it's sweeter, whereas Erin Lilac Path is really quite straightforward. There are some vanillic sweet shenanigans that if you're a sweetness lover, you might appreciate. To me, sometimes it gets a little cloying, but I am somebody who does not tolerate a ton of sugar most of the time, especially in warmer weather. So um, I think a very classic pick if you do enjoy a super floral, very fresh and dewy um, scent. Again, a little bit heavier, a little bit more on the, um, on the weighty side, mostly because of all of the um, sweet, dampened, vanillic undertones that are cruising in here. But for sweet lovers with a floral kick, I think wonderful. Um, interestingly, this scent and this scent, the one I'm going to talk to you about next, which is Carmen Le Parfum, um, are by the same nose. So that's why I put them next to each other. They are quite similar in uh, vibe. So Carmen Le Parfum is another sweet pea based fragrance. This is a lot more girly. This is more lighthearted. More floral, less sweet, but yet still quite sweet. Um, but this is much more spring, early spring, much more of that uh, coming up and, you know, the, the first green leaves, the first little buds shooting out and up towards the sunshine. This is what it is. This um, Burberry one is definitely heavier. They are very similar in vibe, but this is more heavy, more vanillic. This is much lighter and almost shrill in a way, um, in a way that it presents the florals. This is what I actually chose to wear today um, because I felt like it. I think Carvan is a little, a little gem really. If you enjoy florals, if you like the sweet pea note, if you like that delicate, almost innocence that, that is um, like a crystal bell, just rings that high, beautiful, unbelievably pure note I think a good choice to check out again quite sweet extremely floral but like light and girly at the same time very innocent if I had to pick a name for this fragrance it would be innocence because that's what it smells like complete and utter innocence a girl in white chiffon dress uh, and a head full of dreams about whatever maybe she wants to run away and be an artist and a writer but never had it to experience any adversity to actually understand how difficult that could be this is just dreams it's innocent pure dreams it is rain crystal so if that sounds appealing to you i advise you to try carbon it's very very interesting when i'm in that uplifted mood or i want to uplift my mood to sort of match the uh, the delicacy of this. 
I do enjoy using it quite a lot and I think it is one of the very, very spring fragrances. Another floral gem that I, I, ju I just absolutely have to talk to you about is the most classic, well, one of the two most classic ones that I'm going to talk about today and this is Idyll uh, by Guerlain. I have it in the Eau de Toilette format. It comes in different ones, but I think spring-wise and talking about spring fragrances mostly, um, really Idyll Eau de Toilette is the most spring-like out of all of the Idyll releases. And this, I would say, is a much more elegant, versed in the art of appropriateness <laughs> kind of lady. It is grown up. It is elegant. She knows how to handle herself. Uh, she doesn't hypersexualize. She doesn't, and by she I mean the perfume, the, the woman who I envision wearing it. She doesn't need to do that. She doesn't need to be the absolute center of attention. She shines so bright, she does not require a limelight. Uh, so Idyll really, for me, is an epitome of a very elegant floral. A floral that, you know, your favorite aunt smells like and someday you really would like to be like her when you're a kid. Obviously any age can wear this, this fragrance. It's not age specific, but it is elegant to the extreme. It is slightly dewy, um, a little bit of a lilies and a pond water sort of um, a combination, but in the most elegant way. Again, if I had to summarize what this makes me feel like, it's definitely high sophistication and elegance um, in a floral form. It is very tenacious, it lasts a long time. The sillage is very impressive, so you have to dose this carefully, but I think for spring, especially if you are um, somebody who wants to project a lot of confidence, yet calm demeanor, you know, if you're that person, really wonderful. This is one of my faves over years and years. I've been using this fragrance, not this particular bottle, though this bottle is a couple of years old, but I've been using this forever. And this is Parfum de Thé from Kinzel. Um, I find Kinzel being, or Kenzo, Kenzel in French, um, being a very, very interesting perfume house, completely underrated. I like a lot of what they make. Maybe they cater to somebody who has tastes similar to me, uh, but you know, I find their releases interesting and intriguing, yet wearable, just really, really tasteful. Parfum de Thé is something I've been using for years. I believe it's a 2002 release, maybe. It's been released for such a long time. This is not new whatsoever. Not, not new and fresh and shiny, but it stands up to all of the other ones in my collection. It is gorgeous. It is pure and happy. Um, I have two fragrances. The next one I'm going to talk about as well in this. Um, they, they sound a little bit similar in terms of the emotions that they evoke, although they're quite different fragrances. This is fresh. This is uh, aquatic in a way, aquatic floral or, or floral aquatic really, because florals are definitely dominant in here. It's a meadow, it's fresh, it's, uh, it's just woken up as the sun comes up and it's all coming to life after a night of sleep. This is a great morning fragrance. Um, it's refreshing, it's um, awakening, it's stimulating in a way that is quite pleasant and lovely and not intrusive at all. It's just a very lovely lightweight fragrance, but I mean lightweight in terms of the sensation. The construction of it is kind of airless, it's just poof, it's just very light. But um, in terms of tenacity and staying power, it is quite good actually. So the quality of the fragrance absolutely is there. Um, but if you want something rather lightweight without much of a base note drag down that can happen sometimes with fragrances when they're constructed in a very classic way, this is, this is uh, very uplifting, very, very uplifting. The next guy we have here is another very happy fragrance. I mean, most florals here, the ones that are dewy and fun and innocent are going to be happy, but these are probably the happiest too. Um, they immediately uh, make me smile. The second one I'm going to have to talk about is also a fragrance I've been using since 
early 2000s, although it was released less late 90s, if I remember mid to late 90s. And this is a gem that not a lot of people talk about, but people who love florals must check this out. This is Burberry Weekend. Burberry Weekend is Burst of Marigold Sunshine. Um, I don't say that it smells like marigolds, but when I smell it, I immediately think of marigolds. That's a visual association that is very close to this sunny, beautiful, burst of energy, burst of honeyed dew sort of fragrance. Again, there is something quite dewy about it. This is strong. This is kind of quite sweet. Um, and in a way, I mean, in a way, the vibes are kind of similar in the My Burberry, uh, which is a little bit more heavier in the vanilla, I think. But Burberry Weekend has the same attitude. It's just as punchy and sweet and loud, a little bit loud, but in a most smiley, fantastic way possible. But I think this is a little bit more pure, a little bit more clear. Um, if we're talking about sort of um, glass, this is probably tinted glass, um, quite transparent, but a little bit hazy. This is quite clear. This is crystal clear, very bright, very happy smelling. There is most definitely lots of sweetness in vanilla, but not in an edible way, but rather a floral way. You really think more of um, honeyed pollen when you're smelling this. The next fragrance also carries the same theme. I really tried to organize the flow so it would make sense. Um, so there's something very, very honeyed, but bright and happy in here. Um, and it just, it makes me smile every time I smell it. I love wearing it. I have been wearing it recently. It certainly is a gem in my collection and is going nowhere because I really, really like it. Another honeyed, see the transition there? Another honeyed fragrance is another good one. This is kind of difficult to find at this point. I don't think that this is in their permanent lineup, but possible to find. I've seen it on eBay. This is Aqua Allegoria Flora Nymphaea by Guillaume. Lots of flowers here. But there's this very, very much a definite and obvious floral component. Um, so I included it within the florals, but it's not so much spring for me, it's more a fall floral. Mostly because there's this beeswax honeycomb quality to it, which I adore. Um, for spring, I think I like something more zingy, something a little bit more fresh and lightweight, which is well represented within the, <laughs> the previous few. Um, if you are looking for a heavier weight honeyed floral that really smells naturally honeyed, um, I think this is lovely. Uh, you almost smell the beeswax in there and it's very comforting and comfortable to wear. It sits beautifully on my skin and I think those kinds of scents can potentially not be great on everybody's skin, but I haven't met anyone who doesn't wear honey well, so to say. So there's something super comfortable, super comforting, a little dusty about this one. And the dustiness I mean like pollen dust. Um, don't worry, if you're, if you're asthmatic, it's probably not gonna bother you unless you overdo it. Obviously the packaging again, I mean, packaging on most of those is very, very nice and very satisfactory. I'm not seeing bows, I'm not seeing glitter, I'm happy. So um, again, I think the honeycomb pattern that is endemic to these bottles from Guerlain fits this particular fragrance perfectly. I think in other places, I, I'm not so sure that, I mean, I know it's their signature, but it doesn't really make sense with a lot of their fragrances. With this one, it makes perfect sense. This smells like the most luxurious and decadent bees ga gathering, bees conference where they bring the best scents that they've collected that year. Uh, it's really, really pretty. I think one of the better Aqua Allegorias, um, I'm not always a fan of Aqua Allegorias, but that one is a gem. The last one I want to mention is uh, a bazooka, a bazooka of a floral. And as you can see, I don't have tuberose really represented in my collection in a heavy, uh, definite way. I like my tuberose to be maybe somewhere in the background lurking and peeking out occasionally. I'm not a huge tuberose lover, if you do, this is the big mama of all tuberoses, and this is Fraca by Robert Piguet. Oh my god. I never, almost never wear this one. Um, it's too thick, and I can't 
like make my way through that scent easily. Um, I've worn it before and there's a little bit missing. It's mostly full. I keep it because I love smelling it, honestly. I don't think I can wear it easily. It is uh, so potent. It's extremely difficult to dose. Um, the sprayer on it dispenses what it dispenses and a single spray is enough to fill and drown a room. So this is a heavy heat hitter if you love tuberose, if that's your favorite flower and you want something that is super heavy in tuberose, I mean, look at Fraca. Uh, it is a niche fragrance, it is quite expensive, but if you want a pure tuberose that is on knockout, Fraca is the way to go. Again, for me, this is not something I can pull off easily, but this is a creamy, beautiful, carnal, very savage tuberose. It has a lot to say. This, I mean, this is, this is, this, she's taking life seriously and she's about to punch you out if you object. So this is a very, very, very serious, beautiful fragrance. It's not a monoflora, so you're not going to get that only tuberose feel from it, but it is reasonably close to kind of a single note fragrance. The tuberose here is creamy, it's very beautiful. It's not a single note fragrance again, but it's so tuberose, it's uh... It obviously reminds me of the Madonna fragrance, the Truth or Dare fragrance that I have owned in the white um, bottle. I've owned two um, bottles of that fragrance previously, and then I acquired Fraca and I never repurchased the Madonna. Madonna is a little creamy or a little bit more approachable or a little bit easier to get along with, but Fraca, she is, she's a bit of a bitch, guys. <laughs> she really is. She's, she, she means business. She's hardcore. Uh, so, we have a lot of fresh and zingy fragrances, and we have some hard hitters and denser choices. What are your favorite fragrances in this fragrance family? And I'm talking about florals. Pretty clean florals, meaning that floral is most of what you're smelling. Um, without much support from the vanillas and the gourmands and all the rest and the sheepers and all the rest of them. Like, sh tell me about fragrances that you think are super floral and believable, good, good quality. I'm curious, what would you pick and put in this lineup if you were me? Uh, another thing that I want to ask of you is to let me know what your favorite uh, fragrances for the spring are. Because I'm always curious, I have my eye out for certain fragrances when they come in small format or trial size. And I like to pick those up, mostly because my collection is kind of disgustingly large. So I try to uh, lower the volume, <laughs> the total volume of perfume. Because currently I could probably drown myself quite easily in it. That's it for today. I hope it was fun for you to watch. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day and good luck. Bye.